Now, how much do our bodies change over 10 years? Our medical editor, Fergus Walsh, should know. He was the first person to take part in the world's biggest scanning project. And now, a decade on, Fergus is being thoroughly scanned again. The idea is to have better understanding about how the body ages by taking detailed images of the brain, heart and bones to find new ways of treating and preventing disease. Here's Fergus. Mapping the ageing human body. It's nearly a decade since I last had these images of my brain, heart and other organs taken. Now, over five hours in multiple different scanners, it's all being repeated. Why? The repeat imaging of thousands of volunteers will enable researchers to see subtle changes in the body that develop over the years. These may give early warning of conditions like heart disease and dementia long before there are any symptoms. The entire genetic code of every UK Biobank volunteer has been sequenced, so scientists can analyse DNA alongside images of the brain and body. Well, I think a real interest is has been able to look at changes in the structure and function of the brain over time, um, as that may give us ideas as to what are the determinants of early cognitive impairment and early biomarkers of dementia. So I think that is one of the most exciting uh, aspects of this study. So this is just your health and lifestyle questionnaire. Is that all right? That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. All 500,000 volunteers had baseline health, lifestyle and cognitive assessments when they joined over a decade ago. Repeat testing helps scientists track any decline. To date, over 7,000 research papers have been published using the data. UK Biobank is the gold standard internationally for this type of study. It brings together blood samples, scans, uh, linkage through the NHS to people's health records with their consent. So it gives an extraordinarily deep understanding of the causes of disease, which then can lead to better prevention and also treatments. Big breath in. With every year that passes and volunteers like me get older, UK Biobank will yield ever more information on how to combat the diseases of ageing. Fergus Walsh, BBC News. Such a fascinating subject, this. We're joined by Fergus Walsh, still in the report. Morning, Fergus. Morning. Also by our Professor Naomi Allen, Chief Scientist at the Biobank. Lovely to see you here this morning. First of all, help me with this, Fergus. I had this vision that you had a kind of picture of your interiors 10 years ago and you could compare and contrast. That's not how it works. No, there's no feedback to volunteers unless they find a potentially serious abnormality. And if then they let you know. Then they'd let you and okay. your GP know. And when that happens, obviously, you might get an earlier diagnosis or you might go and have tests and have some anxiety and find actually there's nothing there to worry about. But this is about altruism. It's not about getting feedback. And it's an extraordinary success story, UK Biobank. Um, half a million people in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, back in the early 2000s, donated their DNA, did all these exercise uh, tests and gave access anonymously to their medical records. And that data now, uh, like the, all the volunteers, is maturing like a fine wine. And the older Biobank gets, the more richer the data it's getting telling us about the diseases of ageing. You're referring to yourself as a fine wine already, are you? <laughs> well, I'm hoping, yes. I hope I'm not corked. I'm sure you're not. Um, Naomi, what will... How will this data... I mean, it's there, it's available. How already is it being used to a benefit? So, already there are over 7,000 publications based on the data that we have at the moment, and it's producing research from looking at the potential causes of heart disease and cancer through to impacts of tinnitus and asthma. I mean, the whole range of diseases researchers can, can now look at this, this resource. One of the um, really important research aspects that's coming out of the resource is how um, 
by looking at the genetic profile of all half a million participants, including Fergus, how researchers can now um, predict the genetic predisposition of developing a wide range of common diseases. And so once you know that, that can help to um, look at prevention and screening for disease. And when and who can apply to have access to this data? Can anyone, like so any medical these kind of data body? are available for researchers worldwide, right. both from academia and from commercial companies based on exactly the same basis from all over the world. So we have 30,000 researchers from over 90 countries accessing these data for public health research. And is there anyone else doing this around the world? Like there you're are doing others... it, so you can kind of swap data with data too? There are other similar initiatives around the world, but UK Biobank is certainly the largest study with the most data, genetic, lifestyle, health outcome data, and most importantly, it's the resource that is easily accessible to the global research community. And um, help me with this on, Professor. Presumably you back-reference things, do you? So someone comes to you at 40 and then time passes and they're in the programme and then they are di diagnosed with uh, cancer, for example. So you then know that information and then track back through the data you had over the years. Equally well, people presumably will die during this period of time and that too obviously would be of interest. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So, in the participants, they were recruited in the early 2000s, as Fergus said, or half a million of them. We collected an awful lot of information, genetics, biological samples, lifestyle factors, and then we followed them up over decades through linkage to the NHS medical records and find out who develops certain diseases and who does, and that's the basis of the research project. Fergus, how is this going to change your job? Well, it, it, what's really interesting is if you look uh, in the papers, there are stories nearly every month using data from Biobank, but it's never in the headline. Uh, so it's, it's a largely an unsung British success story, UK Biobank. Um, but the way in which it, it changes my job or changes me personally is it makes me want to try to be what I call a super ager, to try and live a healthy life as I age. And the, the really simple rules there are uh, uh, diet, exercise, and I'm sorry about this, guys, getting a decent night's sleep. <laughs> yeah, thanks for <laughs> that. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, that's very true. Professor, when we, you apply this to regular people's lives, people aren't involved with the programme, cast your mind forward, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 years. Are we going to have, a, a like, a... a an extraordinary level of information about ourselves to know our potential risk is that going to become normal over time how will medical how will medical knowledge be different about individuals yeah, over I, that time potentially yes i mean particularly around all of the genetic data we have in the resource i think it's quite possible that you go to your gp for your health check have a have a blood sample taken they will measure your genetic variation and from that they'll be able to say what is your genetic risk of developing, say, heart disease? And if it's particularly high, the doctor may turn around and say, well, we might want to put you on statins or you might want to change your lifestyle to prevent that from so happening. So how long until you're able to do that? How much more data do you need to gather? Well, more data is always mm. good. Um, and I think actually over the next few years, with enough resource, that we have a really perfect window of opportunity as the participants are ageing to collect more data about certain facets of ageing, like, you know, frailty and cognitive function, to enable research into what are the genetic and lifestyle factors that influence um, particularly changes in cognition and dementia. Are you precluded from being involved yourself? I was just shy. You're too young, I was weren't you? Too shy. young. I was just, I was just <laughs> a little bit too young at the time. So you had to be between ages of 40 and 69 between 2006 and 2010. So I, I was nicely in that age group. So I, I feel really privileged to to do this. It's like you know donating blood. It's about giving something back for your fellow human. It's very very interesting. Um, over time, of course, we'll follow it and, and see where it goes. Thank you very much. Okay.